The person who understood probability better than anyone before Pascal and Fermat was another Italian, Girolamo Cardano. Cardano's father had been a skilled mathematician, one that Leonardo da Vinci once turned to for help with geometry. Cardano had inherited his father's ability and then went beyond it. At various times, he was an accomplished physician, engineer, and author. But he was also arrogant, bad-tempered, and outspoken, and was a compulsive gambler. This combination of traits produced a life of both incredible highs and tragic lows. At one point, Italians considered him the best physician in the world. But he died in obscurity after his only surviving son denounced him to the Inquisition for a job as a torturer and executioner. Among the roughly 100 books that Cardano wrote was The Book of Games of Chance. It was not published during his lifetime, but according to his autobiography, he first wrote it as a young man in 1525, and then rewrote it toward the end of his life in 1565. The book is a how-to guide for gamblers, using mathematics to set up rules that increase a player's chances of winning. Or perhaps it is more accurate to say that the rules decrease a player's chances of losing, since Cardano noted that the greatest advantage from gambling comes from not playing at all. Cardano picked up on the ideas introduced in De Vecula, counting the number of possible permutations when rolling dice. He called these circuits, and said that in an ideal world you would see all the permutations in a circuit before any repeated. Imagine a deck of cards. Shuffle it, and then lay the cards out one by one. The order in which they appear will be different each time, but each card will only appear once. Cardano believed that dice should act that way too. But as we know, when rolling dice in the real world, the permutations do repeat. When rolling a single die, the same number can come up two, three, or even more times in a row. When flipping a coin, it is common to see runs of multiple heads or tails in a row. For all of Cardano's observations and innovations, he was still tied to the traditional belief system which said that fate was ultimately determined by the gods. In his autobiography, he admitted to seeking out diviners and wizards and to following their advice. Also, like many Renaissance intellectuals, his view of the world was based on Aristotle. The major theme of the Book of Games of Chance is not mathematics, but justice. And for Aristotle, justice meant equality and balance. Cardano wasn't trying to analyze the chances of different outcomes happening. He was trying to bring an unfair system of randomness into balance. For that reason, he was never able to make the final leap into modern probability theory. He never even published his book, which was forgotten until 1665 almost a century after his death.